I thought the Mother's Day, we look at a couple of places in the scripture on the ideal biblical mother. Because the biblical mother is far lacking in your typical church today. I mean, she gets the, the, the salty, sugary, unhealthy message each and week. But she is hardly ever instructed on what a mother is to be and how a mother is to act. And we can't let the world define. So when we look at the scriptures, Second Timothy chapter 1, we have two short examples. Of what a mother is to be, or at least an example of what a mother should be. And when I call verse 5 to reverence the unfeigned, that means unpretend, no faking, true faith that is in me, Timothy which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also it's a godly heritage of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If there's one thing that Lois put into her daughter Eunice, is faith. And that faith that she got from her mother, she being mother, gave it to her son. A mother and a grandmother working together for their son. Acknowledged by the Apostle Paul. I got to say with my children, I blew it many times in faith. I killed it under pressure. I got upset. I got angry. I wept. But what I taught my children, did I teach them that, you know what? Your dad's not perfect. I'm talking about, you know, talking about dad. Dad's not perfect. He never said he was, never will be. And I would assume that, that Lois and Eunice had times in their life with, with Timothy was, you know what? They blew it. Especially when you talk about that Timothy's grandpa was a Greek and, you know, and it don't mentioned that, you know, he was too well. And yet, look who Timothy turned out to be because of his mother. Because of his grandmother. And you know what's missing in today's family? Grandma. Grandpa. They're missing. They're off in an RV. They're off at the casino. They're in a nursing home. They are absent from the family today. And there is, you know, they got child daycare and stuff like that. No, the grandparents took care of the kids and helped. Their grandparents taught the grandchildren and helped their children Raise their children. That's missing in America. Children don't know where they belong. Children don't know what's going on. Because mom and dad don't know what's going on. The average Christian in, in, the, in the American church, they don't know what's going on.
and the true Christians are leaving the church because the church is bringing in the world. That's the problem. You know, they keep saying, you know, go to church, go to church. You don't need to tell the Christian to go to church. But when your churches are sugary and diabetic, the Christians are going to be amputated uh, out, away from the church. I know I'm, I, I'm, I suffer from diabetes. I got missing tools because of diabetes. Too much sugar is not good for you. First Samuel. And that's what's wrong today. Do you know the woman? I don't have her name. I should have looked it up. You know the woman that first started Mother's Day repented? She's sad she came up with, with Mother's Day. And we're not going to get into the Mother's Day. I got a video about Mother's Day. You say, why is that? First Samuel. Because it's become so commercialized. You got to buy mom this. You got to buy mom that. You got to get mom flowers. You got to get mom a necklace. You got to get mom a car. You got to take mom out to dinner. What happened to a child? Going to school, sitting down with construction paper and a Koran, and out of his own heart making a card for his mother. What happened to that? Do they even today have houses where where your standard American house, the refrigerator is covered with the artwork of the child? Do they even have that today? Well, it says in First Samuel chapter one, Hannah wants a wants a child. Verse ten, she was in the bitterness of soul and prayed on the Lord and wept sore. Is that how you were before you became pregnant, ma'am? Or are you just? opened yourself up and became pregnant. Was your will your pregnancy be a prayer? Now listen, if you ever got a child, you can't go back and change it. But if you don't have a child today, is the future of your child by the foundation of tears and prayer to God. For Hannah it was. Verse 20, Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah conceived that she bare the son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked of the Lord. Samuel, Sam, ask L-U-E-L, -E the Lord. This child I'm holding my arm, she says, I ask God for it. How many children in this country were not asked? How many children where their mothers are going to celebrate Mother's Day tomorrow? How many mothers begged and wept before that child was even conceived and sought guidance from her Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, on what to do with that child? You know, there are going to be a lot of mothers tomorrow happy. 
They're going to get their gifts. They're going to get their meals and whatever they're going to get. And there's going to be a lot of mothers on their knees weeping and begging God to correct their children that they raised. To get their children saved. They're going to be weeping in tears for that child. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. God told Eve. Verse 16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and in conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. You know, it's going to... How many tears have you had? David said, put my tears in the bottle. How many tears has that mother? I looked at my own mother. How many times I made her cry? How many times I've upset her? But the Bible says that's child rearing. Hannah began her tears before she conceived. She began her prayers before that child was in her womb. Lois and Eunice began with that child at a young age. Faith. Trust God. Well, Grandma, you didn't trust God, Dad. I know, son. I'm a sinner. No one's perfect, son. Your mom's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Your daddy's not perfect. But, you know, if we strive to do what God wants us to do, then along comes a man named Paul who takes Timothy under his belt. And you know what? Paul wasn't the, you know, we put Paul on the pedestal. Paul failed. Paul sinned, and Timothy saw that in Eunice, Timothy saw that in Lois, and Timothy saw that in Paul, and Timothy saw that in the congregations, and he still remained faithful. Tears for a woman with child goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. And every woman already tonight crying. And tomorrow crying. And they will go up to the altar. And they'll be at the altar. Because their children have gone wayward. How many times has a child tripped over his mother on her knees to go into a world of sin? And the Bible tells us children to honor my honor thy mother and thy father. And if you make your mother cry. That's not honoring her. You're not a mother yet, and you want to be. Beginning prayers. Your mother, you want to be a mother? Teach that child faith. Not just a sign on the wall, not just a sign on your door, but faith. Teach him. Live it. And no, as a mother, tears will be in your life.